and gentlemen, we have our next uh, presenter. Uh, Bard Cosman is with us uh, from California and uh, has presented papers at past annual meetings and was awarded the Driver Award in 2019. He is presenting his paper entitled Wit Attitude, Design Illusion in the Predominant Black Lives Matter Flag. So Bard, over to you. Good afternoon. I have to give this disclaimer since I'm a federal employee. These are my ideas, not those of my employer. The, the topic is the BLM predominant flag. This is the one that you've seen in indoor settings as a lawn sign and as on official buildings. This is the US Embassy in Seoul, Korea. Um, and it's not formalized. You can see that each one of these uh, presentations picked more or less at random have a different font and have different proportions and yet the design is a standard just standard design um, so the question is what's the origin and meaning and sort of does this qualify uh, as we won't so much talk about good flag bad flag as rather uh, rather a uh, shallow flag or deep flag what, what what's the well what, what's the background of it is it a shallow or deep background and to put that in context here it is presented almost officially with a state and a national flag um, but remember that this is an unofficial flag is there an official one yes there is this this is the official black lives matter global network flag the flag of the founders who uh, who uh, who still own that the uh, the uh, service the uh, trademark for that 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 uh, design? Um, there are of course other unofficial flags. Go to any uh, protest and you'll see something look that looks like this: a raised fist flag. And then there are many others. There's a Marcus Garvey style uh, Pan African version. There's a whole lot of uh, LGBTQ uh, versions. Um, but if we take away the rare ones, I want to present these three as a uh, as the spectrum of deep and shallow, and then, and then situate the predominant one along that spectrum. So origin and meaning of all three. First of all, the Black Lives Matter Global Network flag. Um, this starts with the movement in 2013. There's three founders, they, they have a website. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, and then this one, raised fist flag, which, is, uh, which doesn't have a, a designer uh, but was probably present at the first protest. And you can imagine why this is something that, that one would hand letter if it, if it weren't already available. Um, and then there's this one, from, which starts in 2015 after the movement's been around a couple years. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Uh, the official one, the one that's associated with the blacklivesmatter.com website, which is the, the, uh, the only official organ of the, of the movement, um, it conforms to the black and yellow color scheme of the, that's the homepage of BLMGN today. Um, and, and in the adjacent store, you can buy the same flag. It, has, it, it comes in a variety of, of uh, orientations, but it always has three yellow stripes. What's the yellow mean? So it is the brainchild of one of the three founders, Ayo Tometi, and, uh, and it's filtered through a design group called Design Action Collective of Oakland, California. Um, it does actually have a meaning. It's the dandelion, the dandelion color. The dandelion seed, uh, seed uh, sphere uh, held by a protester, and the dandelion seeds are being disseminated on the wind as it were a disseminated movement. It, it, it goes everywhere on the wind, so to speak. Um, and then the yellow color associated with that is the color of the flower associated with that, the dandelion. So remember dandelion, and then you understand the yellow color of the BLM flag. And then there's the raised fist. And now it, I want to contrast, contrast the raised fist to the official BLM flag that we just discussed. Um, if, we're, if we're going to draw a, uh, a spectrum between shallow and deep, um, I would consider the, uh, the BLM GN flag, the official one with the three yellow lines, something of a shallow flag in the sense that it has to be, it has to be explained. It has a limited, uh, a limited um, set of meanings which, uh, which also don't have much of a history. Just not to say it's vacuous, it's just new. That's a shallow flag. This, on the other hand, is a deep flag. A deep flag, a raised fist. Now, you know what a raised fist is if you've lived in this world, in almost any country. Um, the raised fist is a symbol of protest. Often left wing, but not always. There are just some raised fists from the, from the 20th century, more or less at random. Um, and, also, the raised fist is one of those polysemic uh, 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 
uh, gestures that's really up for grabs. Here you see folks from different ends of the political spectrum raising their fist in protest. Uh, and it's one of those, it's like the American flag or the Gadsden flag, something you run up and see who salutes. And uh, anybody can claim this one. The raised fist is a gesture that means certain things. It's defiance, it's militancy. But the raised fist flag for, for use by Black Lives Matter has a particular resonance to the raised fist of the Black Power Movement of the 1960s. So it goes back 50 years. It takes you back. You see that raised fist flag and you think Huey Newton, you think uh, the athletes who were disqualified from the 1968 Olympics from raising their fists. Um, it, it has a history. Not only that, but it's a black flag. It's got 100 years of history here. This is Kropotkin's funeral in 1921. Black flag means anarchism. White writing on black flag, big circle around the A, big circle around the raised fist means anarchism. So this is a deep flag. This one has not only historical resonance, but historical resonance for the people it purports to represent, namely, the, at least with the black power movement. Okay. So shallow flag on top, deep flag in the middle. What, what do you think about the, about the one on the bottom, the, pre, the predominant BLM flag? Something else happened in 2015. A movie came out with the uh, title in the same design features as the BLM flag, straight out of Compton. Um, now, here's the timeline we're going to talk about. This is the BLM side of the timeline where the movement appears in 2013. The predominant flag appears in 2015 in popular culture on the other side of the timeline. The movie shows up in 2015. Now, that's a coincidence. Is there any more resonance than that? Let's see. What led to the movie being presented with the title in that format? So we have to go back, not 50 years, but 30, a good solid generation. In 1985, the drummer of the uh, all-female band, the Wildcats, was now grown up to, grown up to be Tipper Gore, uh, the, the wife of the senior senator from Tennessee, um, later the second lady of the United States, but at the moment a, a, a prominent Washington matron. Um, here's her young daughter singing happily a popular song. She's an eight-year-old daughter uh, with explicit sexual lyrics. And she says, why, no, why can't we label music lyrics just the way we label movies? Um, and makes, a, makes that her, uh, her project, with a group um, explicitly containing both Democratic and Republican women um, called the Washington Wives, informally. Um, she lobbies to have a parental advisory label uh, placed on music, and, and their influence is such that it actually happens. So here from, is the uh, first edition of Straight Outta Compton, the first, uh, the first uh, record, uh, first platinum record of the gangster rap movement in 19, in, uh, uh, 1988, uh, with a very unobtrusive, I've circled it in yellow, it's very unobtrusive parental advisory label. Um, the, it wasn't quite good enough for the, uh, for the uh, Parents, Parents Music Resource Center, and, and they insisted, and, uh, and they got a big black and white label. Now, St. Augustinians know that if you push, present something in stark black and white, it'll stand out against almost any background. And, and here it is, uh, standing out. You can, this, this is the first use in the album, two live crew album band in the USA. And you can see not only the uh, parental advisory label standing out as, uh, at, from the cover art, but also you can see the, the general attitude uh, expressed by the gangster rap movement here in contrast to in front of and also using the American flag. So this generated some responses, as you might imagine. Um, the responses uh, ended up with uh, a combination of protest and mockery. Now, there's abusive lyrics, uh, and you could make an entire two-hour music set of, of songs and, uh, and raps uh, abusing, uh, in more or less uh, graphic detail, Tipper Gore. They called her bitch, they called her whore, they, it rhymes with gore after all, and, uh, and, it, was a, uh, and it, it was kind of open season. Uh, and there are also adults in the room, and the adults on the music side come up with something that looks a lot like reappropriation. Now we heard, uh, we heard Mr. Gardner tell us about, uh, about from oppression to pride. Reappropriation is a social science concept in which one can flaunt a label of opprobrium. 
that is, you take it on, this is like the impressionists who, who were, were given, as, given the word impressionists as an insult by the academy, but they, they took it on as their name of their salon. This is like uh, liberal folks calling themselves nasty women or conservative folks calling themselves deplorable. Uh, these used to be insults and now they're in terms of self-identification. So. One way to do that is to just flaunt the label. Here's George Carlin, uh, a comedian. He makes the label more than half the size of his record record cover. You know what's in there. It's explicit. And it's funny, too. And then there's two musical genres which do the satire, heavy metal and gangster rap. Now, we're going to focus on gangster rap because gangster rap is a black genre. Heavy metal, a largely white genre. We're going to focus on the, on the, the black aspect of it. Um, the parental advisory here it is slapped on the uh, second edition of straight out of compton and you can see that it's much more uh, much more evident the label is and also it's ubiquitous on this on this uh, in this genre so this genre has been around for 30 plus years this is a, an, a gangster rap album from the year 2021 which still has the same still sporting the same label so much so that the reappropriation has become part of the design um now you can see the, we'll go back to straight out of Compton because that's the that's the album that's that's particular to the BLM uh, flag. Uh, the NWA, which stands for N words with attitudes, uh, is uh, are, are are frequent and furious reappropriators. Um, you can tell by their title it includes the N word, which is something that uh, that one doesn't say. Uh, it's a term of opprobrium, but there it is used for used for self identification. Um, one of the uh, the tracks on on Straight Outta Compton is a uh, is a very clever, very funny, and extremely offensive. Just to shiver the timbers of the Washington wives. Uh, a uh, a uh, a rap battle in which in which five of the six rappers who made the record uh, compete to make the most inappropriate rap, including and concluding with, and parental discretion is advised. <laughs> okay, so that that's reappropriation, and uh, and one of the ways you can tell now that the reappropriation has become part of the self identification is just to look at the Straight Outta Compton album cover and to look at its tributes by other artists. And also reworded parodies, tributes and parodies all include the all include that that uh, label. The label is now part of the design. Didn't used to be, but it is now. So parental advisory becomes a design element in all gangster rap records. It surely makes sense. It's a cultural marker now. If you want to tell to telegraph on a movie poster that this movie is a biopic about gangster rappers, how, how else would you do it? Okay. Not only that, but in 2015, another thing happened. Now, the, the six rappers who made Straight Outta Compton, the six members of the NWA, some of them are gone. You know, they, they, they through death in one case, through retirement in others. But there's one who's now a tycoon. He's a um, he's a uh, an electronics and uh, and marketing uh, tycoon. That's Dr. Dre, and Dr. Dre, as in the company Beats by Dre. Uh, who introduced with his with his famous epigram the original Straight Outta Compton uh, album um, promotes the the uh, the uses his corporate resources to promote the movie. Um, you can do this through a meme, and the meme is the Straight Outta Somewhere meme. Anybody could just take a picture and using the meme website create a meme picture of uh, here. This one's from 2016. President Obama Straight Outta Terms. Um, it's, it's not the original meaning of straight out of, but uh, here, here's the Obama administra administration itself using, this from the administration, using the, uh, the straight out of meme to advertise the Iran nuclear deal. Um, and where influencers and government go, their commerce follows. And so you can get a straight out of your text here t-shirt. This is a straight out of St. Augustine t-shirt. And for the Catholics, this is for the boy who grew up on the mean streets of Hippo that this city is named after, straight, that's St. Augustine of Hippo. So you can get, the point is that this has now become part of popular culture. Now these folks who are using the straight out of meme are giving a kind of a jokey message. I'm a street smart, cool cat, like the original uh, uh, NWA members, uh, which of course is a little bit different from what BLM means when they use this same meme. So this is the timeline now, all gangster rap gets labeled, the meme arrives, commerce arrives, and the BLM uh, flag um, exists in parallel with all this commercial activity. Um, so 
when you see that BLM flag, you remember, whether you, whether you think of it consciously or not, you remember the NWA, you remember the movie, you remember the parental advisory label, the attempt at censorship or simply labeling, depending on how you view it. You hear the voice of Dr. Dre, you are now about to witness the strength of street knowledge. I can't do his accent, but it is absolutely wonderful. Um, you know, it's, it's power, powerful stuff. And of course, what you hear most prominently is you hear the, the title of the most famous track from Straight Outta Compton, Fuck the Police. That's the message that's being, that's being delivered in, uh, in, uh, in a very terse form by this text-only flag. Um, it, you know, the BLM um, movement organizes around resistance or, uh, or, uh, or uh, confrontation with police. So to conclude, we have deep flag and shallow flag. Here's a shallow flag which has a single author and a, a recent, uh, recent and at the moment not particularly uh, well understood uh, message. Here's a deep flag, long history specific association with the black community through the black power movement. What about the predominant flag? We're going to call that deep. It's got a generation long, you know, 30 solid years and counting of, uh, of, uh, of history behind it. Uh, and it also has a specific message, which is, is specific for the population that it purports to represent, and also a specific message that relates to the original meaning of the BLM movement, that anti-police message. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, start with questions. Vern? Uh, I would like to hear your delay. Thank you. I, I, can't, I can't do it, and it would be appropriate for me to try. <laughs> but, uh, Amber, anything on, uh, nothing on the chat? Uh, nothing on the chat yet. Okay. Anyone else in the, uh, in the audience? Ted? Have you seen anybody else draw this connection between the parental advisory and the graphic design language? And the Black Lives Matter I have not. No, this is original. It has the ring of truth to me, which is why I present it. Or if you would, I'm sorry, restate. So I think the, the question is: the question is, I mean, have, have, have we seen other uh, other folks uh, make this association? And my answer is no. Um, go ahead. Have you uh, seen any other discussion of possible origins of this design, or is this like completely like new ground for analyzing? The as far as I can tell, it's new ground. Um, you know, th th this is a it's, it's a design design that doesn't have a known author, um, and and it, and it's not copyrighted, and, and it doesn't have a claimant, as far as I know. So between twenty fifteen and twenty twenty, did you see a lot of use of that of the flag that I first became aware of in, in twenty twenty? Um I, I guess when when I you know, I, I started seeing it probably at the same time you started seeing it, but it's a uh, you know it, it it's been around since twenty fifteen, and and you know the, that that movement was growing and growing and growing, and in twenty twenty just exploded, and it's been so declining somewhat ever since. You still see this one though, uh, you know when I, when I you know, visit other cities, I, I see I see this one as a lawn sign. It's very common. Steve, did you have one? Yeah, I'm just curious if you know anything about the um, there's a, you know, they, yeah, so the question is, is there, is there a, uh, an effort by the BLM GN, Global Network, to control the iconography? Um, it, no, in, in so far as, as, as I think they view their organization as, an, as a, a rising tide and, uh, and their boat will be lifted as well. But they also don't sell this on their website. They only sell the, the three legs about getting get a sweatshirt with the three yellow lines or a flag with the three yellow lines. The yellow lines are important as part of their brand. Amber. I have three questions coming from chat and a comment. I'll start with a comment. Uh, from Steve Wheatley, compelling, shallow slash deep is a useful distinction. Uh, so that was our comment. So the first question was, what does the heavy metal band, uh, band Black Flag have to do with this? 
Oh, so I'm not an expert on heavy metal, but Black Flag is means anarchism. Um, you know, it's it's and and so whenever one flies a an all black flag or a black flag with white writing in the West, we're not talking about ISIS now. Um, in the West, uh, there it's a reference to to the Kropotkin movement, um, the to to anarchism. Um, so that 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 you know and that resonates with the, with with the the heavy metal uh, self image to some extent anyway. Uh, the next question is, is the BLM flag used to represent black Americans or is it international? Oh, um, well, I have not seen it in other languages. So that, that, that I can't entirely answer the question, is it an international flag? So um, I haven't seen it in other languages. Uh, it is, I've seen it flown in other countries. It's, it's absolutely flown in other countries and, and it's this one in English with, with the, the predominant BLM flag, same one. There could, there, there might be an, an other versions of it. There is one more uh, question. How often is the BLM flag used as a flag versus a sign, etc.? Yeah, so I, gave, I, I showed a picture of it being flown as, as sort of the third flag, nation, state, and BLM. And it's used as flag a whole lot in schools and on government buildings as a flag or banner. Um, the lawn sign is probably the most prevalent if you're not at a protest if you're not on the streets then you'll see more lawn signs if you're at if you're at a protest you'll see you'll see this as a flag it is an extremely common flag i'm going to ask the blmgm if they had made any efforts to try to spread the use of their own flag in place of the one that's become more common if there's been any any effort there, or or they just kind of with the rising tide situation we're talking about, or they can be okay with that situation. So, is BLMGN okay with the current situation, or do they attempt to promote their own flag? You know, I, I don't know what they would say if you ask them in private. Um, in in public, they are simply pushing their own. And and you, if you drive around San Diego, you can see the occasional three uh, three yellow stripes flag displayed as a lawn sign or as a flag. Um, but it's it's tremendously overshadowed by the by the, the, the straight out at kind of flag. No. I just have a comment. Uh, Sacramento, where I'm from, had a uh, police killing that ended up with a great deal of violence, and the Black Lives Matter standard flag was everywhere. Everybody <laughs> still is, but primarily at this point, all people's lawns and their corporate windows up there. Yeah. Kyrie. Uh, I just want to comment about uh, the question that you asked about, like, was there um, our own problem in the uh, Franklin Diary and the Black Lives Matter had a student at the Connection Flyer? I have seen a t shirt in the Franklin Diary Black Lives Matter design. Not as okay. a the flag, but as a t shirt design. I don't know how relevant that is, but I have seen one. Okay. Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you. Bye.